Just a quick video to show you my hoogle swale. Is there such a thing? Oh, there is now. Um, we're on a, quite a steep slope. Uh, we're also very dry and arid in summer. Very little rain in the summer months. Maybe one or two rainfalls in total. Things get super dry. And um, one of the great permaculture um, techniques is swales. Swales are a ditch you dig along the contour of the hillside um, to basically catch water that's coming down the hill, slow it down, keep it in one spot for a while and um, hopefully slowly release it to the rest of the plants, especially just downhill of the swale. Um, and what you do is dig it out and pile the earth on the downhill side so you end up with a kind of a what would you call that? <laughs> What's the reverse of a ditch? Like a dike along the downhill side of the swale. And uh, then you plant things in that. And um, hopefully they access the water that's in the swale. Uh, that's got trapped in there. That's got um, sequestered in there, if you like. Uh, this is a very small swale. That's the first thing. I just done a small section because I want to see how it performs here in this sort of uh, well it's not it's actually a plant bed you can't really see that right now but there's asparagus sunchokes raspberries that aren't doing very well and there's a persimmon I've just planted and I just want to see how this performs uh, on this small experiment now one thing I've uh, my my uh, extra take on the swell well firstly um, they say the experts that swales are not really for very steep hillsides now ours is getting to the point where it's maybe too steep for a swale now i think the reasons for that are concerns about erosion and maybe some other things so well we're just going to see if it works on this small section we don't get erosion here we don't our hillsides very very stable um, so there's no problem there the other thing i've done is chuck a lot of organic material in there uh, um, permaculture people say you know you could put sand in there you could put any number of things that will absorb water and so why not you know why not organic material and uh, so I've just chucked loads of uh, old wood and logs and stuff in there and I've got this huge leaf bag yes people around here chuck out leaf bags and they'll see they use plastic bags unfortunately but well, I take them anyway. These are a lot of leaves. They're probably walnut leaves. That's why people chuck them out particularly. They don't like walnut leaves because they think they're bad for the garden. Nah, I'm not too bothered. But I think that will all rot down. It will make a nice organic layer, trap water. And then the plants on the downhill side of this swale will hopefully do really well. And there we go. I poured out the contents of that leaf bag on top of my um, big bulky wood stuff and um, packed it down a little bit and yeah the water hopefully comes down the hill and percolates into the organic material there gets trapped there seeps through the um the swale gradually the the downhill side of it and feeds the plants up there so the last thing i'm going to do is move this little persimmon right onto the swale onto the sort of the berm that's the word berm because I just stuck that in the ground last week just so it wasn't out, you know, because it's bare root. Um, but I think I'm going to move it onto the downhill side. And by the way, there's trees around here. These are plums. This is a dead cherry. These plums are going to go. They're pretty worthless, to be honest. They're little tiny plums that are used for brewing um, brewing uh, Schlivovica around here. This one as well. And this one, they're not very good value, very high value. I'm going to gradually replace them out so I'm not bothered about planting a tree really close to those because hopefully in a year or two they'll um, they'll uh, you know these will have these will be gone and this will be grown up I'm going to probably put at least one more tree along here not sure what yet um, or maybe a little sort of guild uh, but I think maybe just for this winter I'm probably just going to sow out something as like a 
cover crop or something that will just stabilize the berm. Um, I'll just find some seed, to be honest, in my seed packets and just uh, chuck it on there. Probably maybe some kale or something to just to just get growing there. Um, well, I mean, it won't spring up till spring, really, but um, at least something will get going. So let's move this persimmon and maybe do a few more things and we're basically done. Okay, so we've got the persimmon replanted on the downhill side of the berm. Just dug a hole, stuck it in, chucked a few pellets of um, manure on top, but I don't want to go, I don't fertilize stuff too much. Um, more about the mulching, I'm just gonna, I'll probably chuck some more leaves around it later. And then along the rest of the berm, I thought, well, what can we do? And uh, I heard uh, gooseberry uh, will grow really readily from cuttings. So I got some of this year's wood. There we go. There's one. Stuck it in. Stuck it in. Stuck it in. All along there. And I even found, managed to do some root division and get a whole chunk of root and bush. That will definitely grow, even if the others don't. This will sprout no problem. And... Where is it? I think this is, no, this one here. Here's another one that I managed to do a bit of root division off a existing gooseberry bush. And I put that in there. Look, I don't even like gooseberry. I mean, I mean it's all right, but it's pretty underwhelming compared to, you know, strawberries, raspberries and the rest. But it's what I've got. Uh, it's going to serve a purpose to stabilize this berm, get something growing on here. And, uh, you know, still free food. I didn't cost the, the, the um, the planting material you know, didn't cost me anything and I'll just stick it in the ground and hopefully it'll grow and uh, there's still a lot of bare earth here though so probably I found a few little bits and bobs here I found some parsley that hasn't been planted out yet and not even pricked out it's not looking very healthy there's some lettuce as well I'm just going to dot it all around here I don't overthink stuff I can't overthink stuff I haven't got time I've got this Saturday today to do stuff and um, you know I'm just going to chuck it in and see see what happens and see what nature does with it and uh, I'll probably sow some seeds there as well like I said to get some extra cover on there but that's it we'll come back in uh, you know spring sometime and see how we're doing oh just before we go I had one more crazy idea that I remembered I wanted to try and that's uh, this you know what this is you that's the remains of a pumpkin I think it was a butternut and some more here loads of seeds i'm just going to chuck them in there and um i fully expect those to sprout and spread all over this area like crazy and then i won't know what to do with them but um i can sort of train them uphill a bit um i mean like pumpkins and squash and these things just grow so crazy that it just seems like a win-win really just leave them in the ground over winter and they just pop up by themselves and um, to be honest I mean your experience is probably the same that uh, stuff that you've just that's just volunteered by itself often grows better than the stuff you babied and looked after and all the rest of it so I'd be really interested to see how um, pumpkin squash will grow in this environment that the uh, swale will hopefully provide so I fully expect um, this area to be covered in squash plants come may june um and we'll see what happens and uh, maybe it'll crowd out the gooseberries and there'll be no gooseberries after all and uh, to be honest if i could choose between pumpkin and gooseberries i'm a pumpkin man anyway so i'm fine with that uh, of course gooseberries are perennials we're really aiming to have perennials in here so i'm kind of joking but also pumpkins will just come back every year if you um, leave some seed in the ground or leave a few rotten pumpkins lying around so i'm happy with that I've also planted a few more around the garden, those pumpkin seeds and squash seeds, see what happens. I've stuck these little lettuce seedlings in the ground. They'll survive the winter. There's a parsley as well. To be honest, I just had them spare and I just want to see if they'll grow here. And I think they'll do OK. They'll survive the winter and maybe um, do something in, uh, in spring. It's all an experiment and uh, we'll come back and see what happens.